Uh, just of uh, some of the cutoffs I make, uh, I cut them up to one by ones, so I can uh, put these uh, between all the boards I'm making. And no wind, blue skies and sunshine. It's the first day where I think I feel spring is coming and uh, that's quite nice Sit, sitting here in the, in the sun and uh, it's not cold, not cold at all. Yeah, it takes time to get these long locks in place because I have that big pine tree there. Yeah. Spring is arriving, the mosquitoes are dancing in the sun. <coughs> yeah, the boards are, or the stack of boards are growing. All these are one inch and those two stacks over there are one and a half inch. That's floorboards and these are going to go for on top of the cabin and the uh, thing is called the gable end. I put this ice cold. They're still frozen inside. <laughs> And here's all the sticks I'm using. Yeah, you can see them here. It's important when you stack your uh, boards that it's evenly spaced and the sticks are, yeah, they are not exactly on top of, of uh, each other, but nearly. So, yeah. Stacks growing. Yeah, and I was, uh, as I was talking about in the last video, the quality of uh, the saw tracks 
are just fantastic. If you don't push too hard and you are not in a hurry, you'll end up with a cut like this. Smooth as silk. Uh, I planned to do four locks today. I only done two, but the weather's too good. I, uh, I need to go for a stroll in the woods. Um, I think I'm going to drive to the lake and take a walk down there and uh, bring some coffee and a sandwich. My locks are still frozen. I haven't done anything for a couple of days. A muscle or a tenon up here in my neck has caused me a lot of problems and pain. But uh, I can do one, maybe. Now I'll try with this. I'm measuring my locks at the, the top end, the middle and the butt end and uh, I'll go in around 30 centimeters or a foot um, and take the measurement here because that's approximately where the uh, the inside corners are going to be but uh, yeah just like this one I'm glad it's icy everywhere I can just slide them around and every time I measure yeah I just made or debarked peeled these two I put them into a chart so I can see the width of them and uh, the length and I got a, if there's uh, something wrong with the locks it has a curve or a scar or yeah anything I can uh, make a small note out here in this so I'll just just a simple scheme like this and uh, then I know which or I can quickly find out what locks are around the same size for each round uh, of locks to the four walls. If you haven't seen this system before, I recommend you go to the Bearded Carpenter. He has a whole episode of this. Uh, putting him to the chart, I think he's, he calls it. Brilliant guy, knows a lot and gives a lot away uh, by sharing on YouTube. Check him out, The Bearded Carpenter.
Another good thing about this uh, measuring and charting the logs is uh, when you're gonna start building and you're gonna start making your notch, uh, your half dovetail notch, if you have the measurement for the four locks round uh, written down, it's much easier to calculate the size of the notch that goes all the round. I got locks all over the place. Uh, furthest up on my property, I got uh, three different racks. And over there, I got, I don't know, 10, 12 lying. And now I got two here, and I'm gonna get two more. So, yeah, spread all over the place. <laughs> Just been uh, looking at the stack, and I only got four. Yeah, I think four. Four of the long ones left, but I got four, seven, nine, no, ten. Ten of the shorter ones. But the big problem is, some of the shorter ones, or the short ones, are quite big, and I really wanted them on the mill. And uh, they're lying in the back, and two of them are down there. So, I'm not sure what to do. But uh, yeah, I'll start with that one. I noticed uh, on, on some of the locks I was peeling uh, all these scars are on the top side of the lock um, on the cut when I cut them I cut them like this and this is gonna be up or down on the lock when I build the cabin and uh, it's not all the locks that are like that, but all these scars are from the machine that takes uh, or cut the trees down in the woods. And this one is straight and uh, I'll make sure this comes up so I can cut it off. Yeah. I'll move the camera in so you can see the scars. They look like this. Yeah, 
and as you can see this log got scars on the up side and on this side it's nothing over here but uh, this side is uh, the worst so I'm gonna cut this off and when I'm as you notice I still got the uh, the winch with the wire attached and it's locked so when I walk around out here and spins the locks and spin the locks uh, I keep this one on uh, for safety reasons if it starts to roll when I'm walking here and I keep this on until I have secured the lock and uh, just a safety precaution but I think it's there now it's just to jack up that end I think it's that end <laughs> or that one As you can see, I've now uh, made the first cut and all this is uh, cut away. the next log and I got three nice one inch boards out of it yeah I just took these from the stack look at this Yeah. Same with this one. So nice.
Yeah, that con concludes another day at the mill. Tension off. Why do you need to remove all the sawdust? Because it's wet. Now the water's run out. So the tank and press the handle so you empty the valve. And uh, I'm ready for tomorrow, if I am up to it. <laughs> Maybe I do something different tomorrow. <laughs>